Welcome to part two of spirals. Um, again, we're just we're gonna we're gonna look at some cool spirals. Um, each time it generates another one. So just to start the class off, remember what we're working towards and how cool it is. Like you can, you'll notice that the colors are different every time as well, and we'll see how we're doing that. But you can almost notice like it gets very it's very dense in the middle here, and then it like gets a little bit more sparse outwards. Um, if I change this, okay, I'm gonna stop in like two moments. Um, just like these straight lines and I change it by like 90.1 and all of a sudden it will curve in this beautiful way. Okay, cool. We've had enough fun. Let's, let's come back to it. So this is where we left off in the last lesson and we saw we can kind of rotate um, our axis um, around a center point like this. Now, what we're wanting, right, is to try and draw a circle. That's our, that's our first thing. So I know we have a circle here, but what I mean by that is a point that kind of as it goes around the screen, draws out the outline of a, of a circle. Um, and to help with this, let me take away the background and let's see what happens when we take away the background. That look so cool. Um, and we've got kind of our first spiral, but notice what's like happening in the sense of because everything gets superimposed on top of one another because there's no background. So you can see the streaks of numbers which are forming there. So I'm going to get rid of everything now and we can get rid of the tick axes as well because we've, we've learned what we're looking at. If I just do point, right, I do point at, um, let's say, 30, 0. Look at what we get. We start to draw the outline of a circle over here. Um, we can make that point a little bit bigger. So we can use something called stroke weight, which talks about the outline, like stroke is the outline of a shape. Let's make it like something like six. And we can keep it in black for now. Um, and we can see it's a little bit, a little bit thicker. And what's happening is that it's, it's rotating around the whole axis. So I can, I can show quickly on a whiteboard why exactly this is happening. Um, let's like get into my iPad here. There we go. Um, so what's happening is, is that we have our axis that looks like this. And now we're saying, well, cool, we're going to draw a point at position 0, 20. Let's imagine that that's 20 over there, right? Now, every time, every, every frame, we end up rotating by angle. So now this axis, all of a sudden, instead of looking like that, looks a little bit more like this okay and then point 20 is all of a sudden over here and you can see as you continue you're going to draw out all of these points and eventually make a circle now we we've, we've got a circle maybe right so cool but we knew how to draw a circle draw drew draw a circle before this isn't that like incredible um how, how could we get a spiral? So let me ask this question. With this point currently where it is at 30, 0, what is the radius of the circle? So if, if this point over here, so this is actually 30, not 20. So this point over here, if that's 30, what's the radius of our circle? Right? It, it's simple. It's 30, right? The radius R, which is just from the midpoint of the circle to its um, circumference is 30. So whatever this coordinate is will be its radius. What happens if we just increase the radius? So if at this point it's 30, but imagine at this point it was 31, and then at this point it was 32, at this point it was 33. Notice how we get this cool thing that might be happening. Let's find out. So if I make a variable, I'm going to call it radius. I'll make that equal to zero. And inside of point, what I do is, is I put point and I say radius. Um, and now I'm increasing by angle. And then I also say radius plus plus. So radius, radius plus plus, same as radius plus equals one. And I hit run. Oh. Why would this be happening? So something has gone wrong. Let's try and figure out what. Point radius zero. We don't have a background. Hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, we're getting an error. Angle is not defined. Ah. Okay, cool. So now, now we've got we've got angle, angle fixed. That was the problem. We never had angle before. And please work. What? Why? See, this is the problem with coding sometimes. Radius is not defined. Ah, so I do not know how to spell radius. Notice I'm saying radius plus plus, and I'm just the I'm radius, ra radius, radius. Run. There we go. Cool. Okay. And notice how we start getting a little bit more of a spiral. Um, it's, it's that simple, right? So we're just rotating around the center point and increasing our radius at each point. Now, how could we get, like, what, what are the things we could change here in order to change the shape of the spiral? We could change how much we're incrementing radius and angle by each time. So if I say radius plus equals one, which is radius plus one, we get this. If I say maybe, oh, sorry, not radius, angle plus equals um, one. So if I do angle plus equals 0 0.1, notice how it's much kind of larger, the arc or the, the, the kind of the distance it takes before it starts curving. That's because every time it goes, the axis is only rotating by 0 0.1. So if I increase this to 30, we should get a far more substantial um, increase. And look at that. Um, we start, we start getting these, these patterns which branch outwards. And then if I do, let's say 31, we get, we, we, st we start getting these spiral like, like shapes. And doesn't this look somewhat similar? Doesn't this look somewhat similar to the flower we're seeing over here? It's not exact, but I mean, this kind of inner part has like a mighty resemblance to what's going on here, which is just like, it's crazy. It's such simple code to create something that like we're seeing in nature. Um, we can also change the radius, right? So let me ask you this. What effect do you think changing how much we change the radius by each time is going to have? Let's, let's find out. If we say radius is really, uh, we're changing our radius by a lot every time, 10. Notice how the points are really far apart. That's because every time we loop, we are increasing the distance from each point increases by 10. If I increase it by a much smaller amount, instead of 1, I do 0 0.1. Notice how it's going to get much smaller, and you can see that now. Um, you can, it's, taking, it's taking a while to kind of um, even do it because it's so small. Maybe we can go like 0 0.6. Um, actually, no, now you can start to see it as there's enough space that starts to form. But at 0 0.6, it should go a little bit quicker. Um, now, I want to bring attention to one weird kind of thing in the sense of how the angles change. If at angle 30, we get what seems to be like these straight lines that form. And they also form at 45, we'll get these straight lines. They'll form at 90, we'll get these straight lines. And we get four, right? We have four straight lines. Why are we getting four straight lines? What's, what's going on with this? Um, but if I change it all of a sudden to like 90.1, it's going to flip it out completely. It's actually pretty cool. It's like just barely turning because um, it's really small, but we no longer get these straight lines. That sh small shift in angle has made a complete difference. If I change it then to 180, what, what happens? just get two lines going this way what's going on i'm going to leave you guys to try and figure out the maths behind why we're seeing what we're seeing at these particular intervals and try to come up with a pattern for it